by now you all know who is Stella and what I'm going to talk about faith. Welcome to K K S S F. I may slip some Portuguese words. Forgive me. It's my first first lecture in English, so that what you guys can do is just say a prayer. If I say something wrong or if you cannot understand, just say a prayer. I promise I'll be better next time. It's very special for me to be here with you today, with all of you today. It's a very special day for me. I speak about faith. It's something that we have to practice every day. And um, so this study helped me to really understand more and more about what is faith. So I like to share with you this story. Uh, you may know about this story, you may not. And I like to read something for you about this guy here. He is a um, French man, and uh, it's a very interest, interesting story. So, can you imagine a tight rope stretched over a quarter of a mile and spanning the breadth of Niagara Falls? So, he was really crossing the Niagara Falls between the United States and Canada. So the thundering sound of the pounding water drowning out all other sounds as you watch a man step onto the rope and walk across. This stunning feat made Charles Blondin famous in the summer of 1859. He walked 160 feet above the falls several times back and forth between Canada and the United States. As huge crowds on both sides looked on with shock and awe. Once he crossed, once he crossed in a sack, once on stilts, another time on a bicycle, and I know he crossed with blind, you know, the blind um, uh, cover, it's a blind, yeah. Blindfold. Yes, blindfold. Uh, and on a bicycle. And once he, he, he ever carried a stove and cooked an omelette. No, he didn't die there, okay? He crossed all the times. You know, he, he died on another disease, not for, from crossing, okay? Don't worry. So on July 15, Blondie walked backward across the tight rope to Canada and returned pushing a wheelbarrow. That's the picture. The Blondie story is told that it's was after pushing a wheelbarrow across while blindfolded that Blondin asked for some audience participation. The crowds had watched it and awed and awed every time he crossed. He had proven that he could do it of that. There was no doubt. But now he was asking for a volunteer to get into the wheelbarrow and take a ride across the falls with him. It is said that he asked his audience do you believe I can carry a person across in this wheelbarrow? Of course, the crowd shouted that, yes, they believed he can cross. They saw it, right? So it was then when Blondie posed the question, who will get in the wheelbarrow? Of course, none did. So what I'm trying to bring to you guys is a man who did this. You can search on Google. He existed, and he crossed many times that tight rope. And he did, and he did blindfolded, and he carried a wheelbarrow. But when he asked somebody to get into the wheelbarrow with him, no one did. So something's different between faith. So what I'm trying to show here, to share this story, that everybody believed he could do that. They saw it many times, but no one trusts him enough to get into the wheelbarrow with him. And I think many times we do this with God. We believe, but do we trust him? Even though many times he proved he can do it, do we believe we, when he says trust? And that's the con concept of faith. We're going to look into faith in a different way with the help of Google. So uh, in Greek, the root of this word is pistis. It means trust. So many times when you think that faith is belief, in fact, is trust. And it changed a lot, the concept, right? So everybody believed in that French guy. But trust it was another story. So when we think about trust, and then we think, do you have faith? 
thinking on this trust. And then when I was preparing this study, I asked my husband, do you have faith? And he looked at me, and his answer was kind of interesting. He said to me, it depends. Faith on what? But my question was if he believed in God. My intention was to ask if he believed in God. But he was more, I had to study more to get the question he had like in five minutes. I didn't think about faith in what. Because to me, faith was just believing that God exists. How many times, how many times we hear people saying, oh, you got to have faith. Oh, it didn't happen because you didn't have faith. Many times I hear this, oh, I need to have more faith. I think I don't have any faith. But you may think you not have it, right? Or you may, f you may feel like it, your faith is weak. But consider this. Have you ever flown on an airplane without meeting the pilot? Anybody here went to the trusted? The pilot, I guess so, right? Without meeting him, without knowing he was able to do it. We have to trust. So, have you ever eaten a meal without knowing who cooked it? Anybody went to this restaurant and kind of doubt who cooked, how well prepared that meal was? So, we have to think about this. We, have, we do have faith. There's a measure of faith in each one of us. And with the help of Emmanuel, I'm going to show you some things that is in his book on the way to the light that he shows us about he tells us about faith so man trusts that his digestive system works properly or oh, anybody here eats without thinking like oh my i hope my system will digest that big meal big you know hamburger i got so we trust that our digestive system will work right uh, we rest on I'm, I'm going to uh, talk how the way it is the test. So he rests on his feet and walks fearless. So in the morning, we trust that our feet would meet the floor, and we're going to get up and going to walk. Some days might be a little difficult, but we, we trust our feet will respond, right? Uh, he trusts the cooperation of his hands and works skillfully. So we believe we can do the works we do. We don't think about it that we can do. We just go and do it. He knows the power of thinking and influence millions of people with his spoken words. We don't think the capacity we have of processing the thoughts and how we think, right? We know we can think and we can process the thinking. We don't even stop to think how we do this. He follows the natural laws that guide his body experience from the book. Uh, f uh, sorry, experience from the book on the way to the light manual. So everything in life is the work of the living faith in forces that we don't see it and in the things we can't comprehend. So I guess we do have faith. Now at least we can think about something and we do have faith. You guys are sitting on the chair that you guys trust. It's not going to, you know, <laughs> break, I hope. Right? I see one person that is standing, maybe he doesn't trust that much to sit. <laughs> That's it. Oh. Trust it. Oh. You can sit down. So it's OK, this kind of faith. So now we know we have this measure of faith. In one sense, it is certain that confidence in one's own strength gives man the capacity to carry out material things which he would not be able to do it if he doubts himself. Right? So we have to believe we can do things we can, that we believe we can. Faith is, therefore, more than more belief. It is to feel within yourself a force, a faculty, faculty to be de develop it. So in the Bible, it says in Romans 12 that each of us is giving a measure of faith. That's God's creation. He put in us that faith that will move us. Not talking about religion, but faith in ourselves, in life, in the system, in our body. So we do have. From now on, we can say, I do have faith. And then faith on what? So faith, is this, this is in the Spirit's book. Faith is the confidence we have in the realization of something and the certainty of attaining a specific end. It can give place to the realiz realization of great things. It gives us clarity which permits us to see in thought the goal we wish to reach and the means of getting there so that those who have faith go forward in a manner of speaking with absolute security. So whatever you guys plan, if you have faith, if you trust, then you're going you're gonna to make it, you're going to do it, you're going to make the best to achieve that, 
right? It's, it's in us already. But a protecting spirit in the gospel according to spiritism says that in man, faith is the inherent sentiment of his future destiny. It is the consciousness he has of the immense faculties implanted in his inner self. In, it is his duty, duty to make it blossom forth and grow by the action of his will. So now we're going a little bit more further. further. We have the faith, but they are invite us to work that faith and to grow in something bigger. So that's our job to do, to make this faith grow. Okay? In, in a way, we want this faith to grow in something else. So in this logic, every human being carries this kind of faith from birth to death. This would be the faith of those who play the lottery. For example, or invest in a new love. This is the faith we all have. But then there's two kinds of faith. There's the human faith and the divine faith. And this is the Leonardo da Vinci, the Sistine Chapel painting. It's just like a little uh, one part of that painting, which is the uh, meat of God and Adam. Okay? And you see two hands. And can you guess which hand is God, which hand is Adam's hand? So, the side is God, the other side is Adam. So the one that's pointing, so the one on the left, is God's hand. He's the one who's making the contact. If you see the picture, you're going to see Adam just laying down, like very, like, not really intending to touch, and God is in action, touch him. So sometimes that's how God works with us. We're not really making too much effort to meet that finger, but God is there in action. So it's very interesting when I saw this study about it and how we kind of live our faith, where God meets us. It's very interesting. If you see and you read about it and you see again this picture, think about this connection between God and Adam and think about ourselves being touched by God and helping with our faith, okay? So, faith is either human or divine according to how man applies his faculties to the satisfaction of terrestrial needs or to celestial and future aspirations. So now we are making a change when how you want to live that faith. How are you gonna work that faith to something more, something else, something that you even don't see it, right? And here, I brought this Confucius uh, saying, and it's exactly what we've been, I've been telling you guys so far. The will to win, the desire to succeed, the urge to reach your full potential, these are the keys that we will unlock the door to personal excellence. This has nothing to do with religion. This is something we all have. This is very clear. However, when we have divine faith, things work a little bit different because we're learning how this works. So Christ, who performed material miracles, showed us through these same miracles what man can do when he has faith. That is to say, the will to desire and the certainty that this wish may be achieved. We have hope. We have to understand that with this faith we exercise, it's going to turn into some miracles. And miracles, we've been learning this hopefully, who's studying here, knows that miracles uh, are natural effects whose cause were not understood at that time. We know the miracles they have. Uh, we can explain a lot of miracles. Uh, the invitation here is to see that with our inborn faith, we can work and make this faith grow. And with this faith, we can produce miracles. Right? At this, that's what the Bible says. We can create miracles. So if all incarnates could be persuaded of the for force which they carry within themselves, and if they wished to place their will at the service of this force, they would be capable of producing these so-called miracles. This is a protecting spirit, Paris, 1863. So if we have an idea, the power we have within us, we can do so many things. And they say that the faith uh, it does not grow, it's not a miracle in us. We have to work this faith. And this passage is in Matthew 14, uh, chapter 14, um, 29, where uh, Peter has to get out of the boat and walk on water. So he has to exercise his faith and, and trusting he would not 
uh, drawn in that water when he met Jesus. And my mom always says that maybe Jesus just pulled Peter when he drawn by his hair. Like, again, like we fail, we don't believe, we don't trust. That's when we draw. So we have to remember to exercise this faith. And, and, and with that, we're going to trust more and more. So the tree of living faith does not grow in the heart miraculously. As happens in ordinary life, the Creator gives everything but does not dispense with the creature's effort. So we have to have our effort to have that faith growing in us, the trust. Most people admit that faith is a miracle hello, donated to some spirits, privileged by divine favor. I used to ask my mom to pray because I thought that she had more faith than I did. So I could not pray by myself. I have to ask her to pray for me because I thought that she had more faith than I did. Not knowing we can get our faith, work our faith to trust more and more. It's a work, it's an effort that the Creator expects from us, that we do our part. So some people believe and understand having brought with them on being reborn the intuition of what they know. In other people, on the contrary, they hardly penetrate. They still have everything to learn. So when we reincarnate, of course, some of us, we have been exercising that faith more than others. So it, it might be natural for us to, to trust more or have more faith because we know by experience that works. And some people not, and that's fine. That is how it's supposed to be. We have to learn to exercise this faith. So faith cannot be prescribed or imposed. We can transfer. You cannot have the little, you know, uh, helmet and just transfer faith. No, we have to do ourselves. Also, they explain to us that no one can, therefore, in the right mind, completely transfer the vibration of faith to the spirit of others because it's really up to each one. I don't like this part. If I was the creator, I would do it different, but I understand his respect that the creator knows better, so we cannot transfer uh, the faith. You can input in any, any person. They have to do it themselves, so we have to work. Faith needs a base, one that gives complete understanding of what we are asked to accept. In order to believe, it is not enough to see. Above all else, it is necessary to understand. So we don't trust because we trust. We've got to do some work to understand why we trust. Why do we have faith? And I brought St. Augustine here because he says something very interesting. He discussed the difference between the Christian faith and reason, saying that faith makes us believe in things we do not always understand by reason. In order to believe, it is not enough to see. Above all else, it is necessary to understand. So many times, faith overcome reason. And that's why he says, I believe everything I understand, but not everything I believe I understand. Everything I understand I know, but not everything I believe I know. And I have to read like many times because I still read and think, how profound is this, that sometimes we believe because we believe, sometimes we don't understand, but still we believe. And it's this, this work of understanding and believing, that's what really shows us how we have to uh, think about our faith and not accept everything. So we have to think this. I believe everything I understand. Yes, when I understand, it's easier to believe. However, not everything I believe, I understand. How can I guide, cross the Niagara Falls, blindfolded, with wheelbarrow, so many times? I see, I don't understand, I believe, but I don't trust. That's exactly. So everything I understand, I know, hopefully, right? But not everything I believe, I know. I may believe because I believe. I, I shared this story when I did this um, uh, speech on, in Portuguese that I used to believe something very silly. I used to believe when I was a kid that my dad would tell, would tell us um, that the ocean gets rough because kids are making too much noise on the beach. And I grew up swearing and I was really mad at so many kids in my life because they were making so much noise at the beach. So when I grew up and I, w I had my 
I was dating my husband and I told him, I hate when these kids make noises on the beach. He goes, why? I said, because the washing gets rough. He goes, who told you that? I said, my dad. Of course, my dad, the most you know, amazing guy, most intelligent person on the planet. And he says, no, it, it cannot be. I say, oh, but watch and you see these kids yelling and, and crying and screaming. The ocean is going to get rough. He says, no. Have you ever thought that maybe he said that because he had four daughters very little and he wanted some peace at the beach? So he told you guys not to make any noise because the ocean is going to get rough and then maybe you guys can be quiet while he enjoyed the beach. But no, not my dad. My dad will never do that. But it's silly as it, it, it seems, and I still believe, and part of me still believes that when I see kids yelling at the beach, I really have this <laughs> rush to go and say, stop yelling, you have no idea how rough this ocean can get. But it's true, so many things we believe because we believe without thinking. Does that make sense, really? Right? I think, no. Well, you guys can yell, scream, and do many noises, a lot of noises you want to be. <laughs> be yourself at the beach, okay? I promise you, I don't think the ocean. Maybe, but my dad was right. So that's, that's what they're telling us about this understanding. And I brought this picture, because you know this, I'm so, I don't know if you guys heard about it, but everybody saw that apple fall, right? But only him, only Newton asked why. So he believed that gravity existed before he could fully define or it state into a hypothesis. He knew something was going on there, so he decided to go and, and understand why. So combining reason and feeling, sometimes we know that uh, the reason overrides, right? When, when nothing makes sense in life, we know our feeling. So we cannot just go by feeling or, or, uh, and reasoning, it has to be common sense of both. Examining nothing, blind faith accepts unchecked the true as well as the false. And every step clashes with evidence and reason. Taken to excess, it produces fanatism. It is necessary that reason be illuminated by feeling. So not too much of believing everything and be fanatic about it, but we have to bring some kind of uh, feeling to that belief. This way we, we can navigate and ask these questions and, and try to figure out and try to understand more, to believe more what is to believe. And it's exactly what Allan Kardec told us to do, right? He tells that unshakable faith is not, is, I'm sorry, faith is that which can stand face to face with reason in all epochs of humanity. So that's the kind of faith when we really understand. Uh, many times we know, no, people can tell us things that we know because we lived that. We know we can't say it, it is the way it is because it happened to us. We understand now how it works. So faith, which is real and sincere, is always calm. It permits patience, which knows how to wait, because having its foundation in the intelligence and the understanding of life, it is certain of reaching the objective it aspires to. Those who have faith deposit more confidence in God than in themselves as they know they are but simple instruments of divine purpose and can do nothing without God. So the divine faith, now we're talking about something that we pursued, we want to really be, uh, we want to understand more about life and how it is this creator, what is above us, how sometimes the will of God, thanks God, <laughs> surpasses our own will, right? Somebody thinks more than we do and can see the big picture more than we do. And Voltaire says that faith consists in believing when it's beyond the power of reason to believe. Emmanuel says that to have faith is to keep in the heart the luminous certainty in God, a certainty that has surpassed the realm, realm of religious belief, making the heart rest on a constant energy of divine realization of personality. The comfort, Emmanuel, Chico Xavier. So what they say about if you get the reasoning and the uh, feeling is to think like this. This is in the um, Spirit's book, Spirit's Instruction. They say that for us to love God, but knowing why you love him. Believe their promises, his promises, but knowing why you believe them. Believe and wait without fail, 
Miracles are works of faith. So we really need to think about learning this whole process to understand more, to make us believe more, to have more faith and to have more miracles. I guess that's, that's how they want to work this faith in us. To achieve faith is not to reach the possibility of no longer saying, I believe, but affirming, I know, with all the values of reason touched by the light of feeling. To achieve faith is to reach the possibility of no longer saying, I believe, but affirming, I know, with all the values of reason touched by the light of feeling. I believe everyone, every one of us have that moment and when we say, as I mentioned before, I believe because I know, not just because I think I should believe, but I know. I know that prayer got answered because I know that's how it works. So of course, faith does not make things easy, it makes them possible. That's what the Bible says, right? doesn't get easier because we have faith, but it's possible. It gives us more to look for, to have uh, hope. And that's the, the, um, the objective, to have faith, to have hope. So what is the power of faith? The Gospel according to Spiritism says, this is the reason for Jesus saying to his apostles that if they did not cure, it was because they had no faith. Those who have faith deposit more confidence in God than themselves, as they know they are but simple instruments of divine purpose and can do nothing without God. This is talking about a passage um, when Jesus says that uh, the apostles come to him, to Jesus, and say they could not cure uh, a demon-possessed boy, and Jesus was like, you guys didn't do it because of a little faith. So here we study about this, how this faith works. And this is from the books. Through the intermediary of faith, man acts on the fluids, which are a universal agent, modifying their qualities and giving them in a manner of speaking irresistible impulsion. So great fluid power plus ardent faith plus willpower to goodness equals healing in all the occurrences. That's why we've been studying here in the classes, knowing how it is this fluid, how we can have our real power, how we can believe and produce these miracles that we know now we can explain. So that's the power of faith, how we can work with this fluid and having the faith to make this happen, the healing. So when Jesus was talking about why they, they could not heal the boy, is because they didn't know, they have little faith because they, still, they were still working, learning to develop their own faith. Like we, we don't know. When we, we learn this, we can do even more. That's what Jesus says. When we, we can do more than what he did when we learn how this works. So this is what Jesus says in Matthew. That when he says, uh, that's the Jesus answer when the apostles came to him and say they could not heal the boy. He says, because you have so little faith. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and you move. Nothing will be impossible for you. And the picture, I don't know if you guys have a chance to hold a mustard seed, is very, very little, very tiny. Next time you go to the supermarket, go to the aisle of the uh, uh, seasonings and get this mustard seed. Because it's amazing when you put in your hand, that small seed can turn into a big tree. There was a reason for Jesus to compare uh, to the mustard seed, not to uh, like, a, 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 like a sand, a little you know, grain of sand, yeah. Because he knew from that seed will turn into a tree. That's how he sees us. So when he says we have a little faith, he knows we have the capacity to produce big faith. That's how, why he talks about this, this mustard seed. And that's why he mentioned to the apostles, the apostles to get more faith, to work more on their own faith because nothing it would be impossible. And uh, so Jesus used this as a symbolism, right, um, to, for teaching. From wavering faith, Jesus only a certainty. This faith does not even try to find the means to win because it does not believe it can. But when you believe you can, you can move mountains. But while he talks about mountains to be more uh, current to our own um, time, these are the mountains they say that faith moves our difficulties. 
our, our resistance, ill will, prejudice, materialistic interests, selfishness, prideful passions. So robust faith gives perseverance, energy, and resources which allow us to overcome these obstacles. So think about how many things we can do when we learn how to believe and use that power of faith to move all these mountains uh, out of the way and have more uh, robust faith and do the miracles we can do with all that combined. Another example of uh, how to use that faith is the story um, of this woman who um, was there and she has been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She was bleeding for 12 years and no, no one could heal her. So when she came up behind Jesus and touched the edge of his um, garment, um, her bleeding stopped immediately. So she believed he could do that. She heard about him and she went after him, but she believed he could do it. So she uh, used her faith to believe he could do it and she got healed. But he said to her, then Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. That's the power of faith. That's the power of belief. Another thing is not only using our faith, but faith also uh, has to do with works. Our faith without works is nothing. The Apostle, Apostle, Apostle James said with conviction, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show my faith with, by my works. The invitation is that faith has to be some action. You cannot just uh, have faith without doing your part. You have to do something with that. And what they mean is to do uh, uh, you have to do charity, you know, but the way that Jesus believed in that, uh, when you do like, um, when you forgive, when you are indulgent with, uh, with somebody's faults, when you know, when you work something uh, in, in, in benefit of others. So in order to be strength, faith must rely on acts of benevolence, devotion to one's neighbor, personal renunciation for the benefit of others. So this is what the, the invitation is that faith without work is nothing. We have to work something to uh, also strengthen our faith. And here, some of the people in the Bible we know that did that, right? The disciples of the gospel may clearly understand that the noblest ideal without work, materializing it for the benefit of all, would always be an unproductive landscape. And um, so many times in the Bible, Jesus talked to different crowds. He talks to the multitude, he talks to the disciples, disciples and the apostles, right? So when he talks to the uh, crowd, the general crowd, he talks to people that, uh, everybody. When he talks to disciples, then it's more like to the um, people that uh, know, heard about him, but they're not really doing what he was doing. And the apostles, apostles, yeah. Forgive me, yeah, that's right, right? Yeah, thank you. Um, that's when they are ready to do what Jesus was telling them to do. That's the difference. So many times I think we listen to these teachings as a regular crowd. When we hear, we don't really grasp it. And then sometimes we hear as a disciples, like, okay, we, I know, I heard about it, but I'm not really ready to act like the things I learned. And the, the apostles is like, okay, I know I can do things because it's in me now. I can do as Jesus did. So the invitation is that with all these works these people did, to preach through the example of your faith, so as to transmit it to mankind. Preach it through the example of your works, so as to demonstrate the merit of, the, of faith. Preach through the firmness of your hope so they may see the confidence which fortifies and puts one in condition to confront all life's vicissitudes. So we are an example for people who are, who are watching us. People are always paying attention to us, even though sometimes you don't realize, but we might be this example of faith to somebody else. I know people in my life that I got my faith strength because I watched how somebody went through something, and that's the work of faith. When you can really, with your life, uh, show the, uh, the works of your faith helping other people. That's the invitation. And we know somebody who also said that we can preach the gospel at all times, if necessary, use words. 
St. Francis of Assisi. So that's the attitude we have, it speaks more than any preaching. In the uh, book Our Bread, How to Be Men of Faith, Emmanuel says that the men of faith are not only those who are worthy and enthusiastic, but those who are equally bearers of attention and goodwill before the lessons of Jesus, examining the spiritual content for the work of daily effort. So the invitation is, yes, we do have that faith. I talked about it. We were born with that faith. How we, we work that faith, that's, uh, we, uh, that faith is inborn, and how are we going to make that faith turn into something more divine? How are we going to grow that faith into something to make us better, understanding why we believe what we believe. It's a journey. And we have to also not only to live for ourselves, but also to show other people how to live this faith. We're going to be a live example of this preaching. And uh, faith is the mother of hope and charity. As I said before, uh, they all three, they work together, faith, hope, and, and charity, because faith Help us to have hope in the realization of God's promises. Without faith, what would be there to hope for? So faith helps us to have uh, hope for something better. And if it's not faith which gives love, without faith, what would be your worth and what quality would your love have? So they all together, the, la the love, the faith, and hope, and charity, they, uh, um, one is kind of connected to each other. So when, when you have faith, it's easy to have hope. And when you have hope, you can work in someone, someone else's life. You can help other people. You can really exercise your patience and your love towards to other people. That's what they tell us to do. So tribulation produces patience. Patience produces experience, and experience, hope. That's unfortunately, uh, I think it should be in another way. But technically, every time you go to tribulation, that we learn patience. And every time we get better and patient, it grows our experience. And our experience shows we can have hope. We understand the weight sometimes it's necessary to get what we need to have, right? So faith represents the compass, the lit lamp guiding our steps through obstacles. This is vine of light. And I brought to you guys this uh, beautiful prayer, uh, which is uh, from May May. The golden moment. When difficulties multiply around you, causing you embarrassments and struggles. When the vicissitudes appear to be so unbearable that abandoning your obligations seems to be the only way out. Then, only then, will you have reached the golden moment to give a testimony of your faith. Because serving and acting upon facing fatigue and tribulations, you can be assured that due to your work and dedication, God will come to your aid with the unanticipated assistance and the unexpected light. This is a very beautiful prayer. We have to remember this. Every moment, it might be very difficult, really the struggles we're facing, but we have to have faith to trust that God is with us all the time, and he's going to help us to strengthen that faith. But with the invitation that we work that faith in a way to make that faith grow and help us to believe more and understand more. So it's kind of all connected. As much as we learn, we believe. The more we believe, we understand. It's all connected. That's why it's so important we come here and we learn and we read and we try to understand more, to really have that strength um, uh, of your, the way you live your life, like uh, how you're going to make that to show on a daily basis your hope and your love. So fear can keep us up all night long, but faith makes one beautiful pillow. That's what I wish for you guys. Thank you so much. It's my first time here. I really appreciate your time. And here, this is the book. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Rafael, who comes here now for the announcements? I'm going to go there. Uh, so a little, uh, I left these books here. We have all these books uh, at the bookstore. You guys should read more about it. It's just beautiful, really, this um, study about faith. It helped me so much to understand why we believe and how we believe. Thank you so much, guys.